Hello, I'm Kimberly, and welcome to the weekend edition of the Nave News Update. It's Friday, July 11th, and many of the stories you hear here can be found at IndianCountryNews.com. And here's the news for the day from the Associated Press and other Native news sources. Part of about 1 million gallons of salt water that leaked from an underground North Dakota pipeline owned by Aero Pipeline and LLC, a subsidiary of the Houston-based Crestwood Midstream Services Incorporated, has contaminated a bay that feeds the Missouri River Reservoir that provides drinking water to communities on the Fort Berthold Reservation. Salt water, up to 30 times saltier than seawater, is a waste product of oil and natural gas production. State authorities consider it a major environmental hazard and it's being investigated by the officials of the Environmental Protection Agency. Tex Hall, chairman of the three affiliated tribes, told the Associated Press that a pipeline in the vicinity of the Mandaree leaked an estimated 24,000 barrels of salt water in the Bear Den Bay, a tributary of Lake Sacagawea. Miranda Jones, Vice President of the Environmental Safety and Regulation at Crestwood Midstream Services, owns, who owns the pipeline, said the leak, which started during the weekend, was discovered on July 8th. It was discovered while company officials investigated reports of production shortfalls. The leak has reportedly not affected drinking water, but according to officials, it has caused damage to trees and natural vegetation in the area. An isolated indigenous tribe in the Amazon rainforest has made its first contact with mainstream society. Emerging from dense rainforest along the Upper and Vira River in Brazil, the group willingly approached a team of Brazilian government scientists on June 29th and made peaceful contact with the outside world. Officials suspect that the tribe fled illegal logging and drug trafficking in their traditional homelands in Peru. Some fear the peaceful encounter with Brazilian government scientists in Acre State near the Peruvian border late last month could have dangerous development for the uncontacted people who are said to be extremely vulnerable to illnesses like the common cold. The journal Science reported that the June 29th encounter was reportedly the government's first with an uncontacted tribe since 1996. After sightings last month, Brazil's Indian Affairs warned that the uncontacted tribe could face risk of tragedy and death, according to Survival International, an advocacy group for indigenous tribes that have called on the Peruvian government to crack down on illegal deforestation that is believed to have been caused the uncontacted peoples to flee. According to FUNAI, at least 77 isolated groups are believed to be living in the Amazon. On July 10th, a Jackson County Chancery judge in Mississippi officially made the Van Cleve Live Oak Choctaws a state and locally recognized tribe. Tribal members said this is a huge victory and a great help for the federal recognition they are working toward. The newly formed Live Oak Choctaw tribe said they've worked for years to become a Mississippi recognized tribe. There are two groups of descendants who mended their differences to become one. Their hope is to win the same distinction from the federal government. The Live Oak Choctaw tribe said so far they have about 2,000 proven descendants who are considered members and they want to include everybody who's eligible. Starting July 11th, people on the Blackfeet Reservation as well as the general population can access interactive information on the Pikani language and culture through a new website developed by the Blackfeet Community College. The website and a smartphone application were created with funds the tribe received from the 2013 Montana legislation to preserve tribal languages. The program, coordinated by the Montana Historical Society, allows tribes to access funds based on different proposals that would not only teach tribal languages within the tribe, but educate the entire population. With the website and the app, people can hear the words spoken in English and then in Pekani. For more information, you can check out PekaniPatapisan.com. A search is underway for Native American actors to star in a tribally produced feature film at, that shares the story of a trailblazing Native American entertainer. An open casting call for Teata has been underway all summer, produced by the Chickasaw Nation. Teata is a full-length feature film based on the remarkable life and legacy of a Chickasaw performer, Mary Frances Thompson. Best known for her stage name, Teata, which means bearer of the dawn, 
She gained international fame presenting a unique one-woman show of American Indian heritage and culture to audiences across the United States, Canada, and Europe. Named Woman of the Year by Ladies Home Journal in 1976, Teada's creative performances delivered to kings, queens, presidents, and everyday people helped inspire greater respect and understanding of American Indian culture and heritage. Inducted into the Oklahoma Hall of Fame in 1958 and the Chickasaw Nation Hall of Fame in 1990, she was awarded the Oklahoma Governor's Arts Award in 1975 and declared Oklahoma's first state treasure in 1987. For more information on the casting call, you can check out teatathemovie.com. And that's another roundup of news from Indian Country on this edition of the Nave News Update. I'd like to thank you for joining me and have a grand day.